genes were to be found at the time. Of course, they're all dead now, and most of the houses have been torn down. And anyway, the Lockridge device was very unique in that it had one pole piece here, one pole piece here, one pole piece here, and one pole piece here, which made it a four-pole motor. But two of these pole pieces were generators, and the other two were motors. So this is a motor, and this is the gem. Now, something very interesting here, because this was a North Pole, and this was a North Pole, and this was a South Pole, and this was a South Pole. Well, you see, it's not six poles, it's four poles. So, in between these portions of the poles, very conveniently, if this case went backwards like this, a slot was cut to divide the case in four places. And we'll get a close-up on this in a minute because there's a reconstruction of it here that they tried to rebuild that didn't work. But remember, uh, from all my past videotapes and everything on scalars and magnets, that I said if you put two north poles together, push them together like this, you get a beam that appears here. So the magnetic field sort of looks like this. It's very sharp. And this is actually very detailed. But that's basically what the beam looks like. And it's north here and north here, and it's a pinpoint beam, because normally the north pole, the magnetic field goes like this. So I've always said that by doing this, by pushing the two north poles together, that you're creating a scalar, a scalar beam, pinpoint scalar beam. So, what was really going on in this thing was the generator and the motor. The generator is a, a constant thing, and the motor is a switch thing. So between these two, two, you have an attraction field when it's generating, because these are energized. And then when the motor turns on, what happens is these two it interferes with this field and wants to push like this. And so it's going to do the same thing from this side. So what you have there, and then by splitting the case, you have two norths, north here and a north here. So they want to take that they want to take this scalar away, so they slot the case, so they don't interfere with each other. But anyway, that's just a little explanation on the scientific end of the Lockridge device, and basically what was going on in the functioning of it, and what's going on with these electro, in this case, electromagnetic beams not permanent magnet beams. But, so anyway, the problem, the problem with the Lockridge device was that number one, even though it was an over-unity machine and it produced, it only produced 300 watts of usable power while it self-ran. So, but, so if you, if you maintain the 300 watt level, the machine continued to run until the brushes wore out. Now, something very unique, if we look at the brushes that make up this, you get a close-up here. 
Notice the size of the brush that's here. It's very thin. You see it? 